Welcome to Bass Habits episode number 60. Today we're going to talk about the role of the bass guitar in the music of one of the most popular rock bands of our time, Queens of the Stone Age. Founded by vocalist and guitarist Josh Homme, who has been the only constant member throughout multiple lineup changes, Queens of the Stone Age emerged in Palm Desert, California in 1996, after the dissolution of the stoner rock gods Caius. Over the years, the band reached mainstream success and considerable international recognition and have since embarked on successful world tours and released seven studio albums. Their style has been described as alternative rock, stoner rock, new metal and crowd rock, featuring solid and repetitive riffs in its song structure. So what's going on in the bass department? The band never had a permanent bass player and the role has been taken by a number of musicians over the years. Their self-titled debut album was recorded by former Caius members Alfredo Hernandez on drums and Josh Hami on all other instruments. So let's have a look at his bass playing. For the distorted tone in this video I'm using this little but efficient distortion pedal by Donner. Check the link in the description to know more about it. Queens of the Stone Age debut album pretty much sets the standard. As you can probably tell, repetition plays a key role in their music, and this of course reflects also on the bass lines. If only it's just the same four bars all the time. Besides repetition, another key element is dissonance, that gives Queens of the Stone Age their trademark disturbing vibe. Mexicola has a pretty interesting line that uses the Chinese scale. The Chinese scale has both the tritone and major 7 interval, which are both perfect dissonances. As a result, it sounds very unstable and sinister. You would know uses a flat second interval that also sounds pretty dissonant and the added bending creates another flat second interval for a super spooky effect. Besides that, there's not much else to say, Homi is the guitar player and he sounds just like a guitar player on bass, providing heavily distorted low end. On Give the Mule What He Wants, however, the unexpectedly melodic bass line is provided by special guest and former Caius producer Chris Goss. On the following album, rated R, former Caius bass player Nick Oliveri joins the pack and takes over bass duties. And man, you can tell it from the very first second. So to say thank you, we're gonna sing a song about drugs. Listen to that tone. You can clearly hear the attack of the pick against the strings, providing an additional percussive sound that helps build in the sonic wall that actually makes the song. That eighth note pattern with the guitar and bass always hitting together on the same note will become one of the trademarks of the sound of Queens of the Stone Age. The key element to Oliveri's tone is a precision bass played through Ampeg SVTs, cranked way up. He 
His tone sounds fuzzy yet growly at the same time, so those tubes are working hard. Next thing you want to do is tune down. For most of their career, Queens of the Stone Age tuned down to C, two whole steps down. The loose strings, a good down picking technique and a low action provide the extra bite and percussive sound of Oliveri's tone. <laughs> From a songwriting standpoint, Oliveri often comes out with some quite elaborate lines, often independent from the guitar and drums. <music> On the last art of keeping a secret, the main theme of the song is built around the staccato 8th guitar chords, while the bass keeps bringing in some little tasty pentatonic licks to keep it all together. is played on the high part of the neck. While the chorus drops down on the lower string for dramatic effect. This type of tuning gives you a wider range of harmonics compared to a regular one and it comes pretty handy to bring dynamics. In the fade has a similar structure with a very cool, almost dub vibe on the verse. Better Living Through Chemistry has also an interesting bass line built using the flat 7 and 2nd degree of the minor scale. What makes it cool though are the irregular pauses between the notes. Oliveri will carry on bringing in catchy bass lines also on the following record, Songs for the Deaf, including the bass solo on No One Knows. Here you can also tell how he keeps his tone rolled off, contrary to most precision bass players, that contributes big time to the trademark muffled sound of Queens of the Stone Age. How did Queens of the Stone Age become so popular is a mystery to me. Dissonant melodies, lo-fi recordings, weird lyrics and disturbing music videos. They have all the elements that you shouldn't go for if you wanna go mainstream. After the release of Songs for the Deaf, Oliveri got fired from Queens of the Stone Age and bass guitar duties were taken over by different people including guitar player and former The Perfect Circle member Troy Van Leeuwen who provided low end to their following record, Lullabies to Paralyze. Van Leeuwen was again a guitar player on bass, so it's no surprise. On this record, the bass parts became way simpler, way softer and overall much less interesting, often providing the mere bottom ends. Good old 8th root wall, it's still there, but this time with an even more muffled and muted tone. The verse of Little Sister is quite interesting in its simplicity. The part is built around three repeated guitar chords, A5th, E5th, C5th and E5th. The bass follows a different pattern, A, E, C, G and A, B, C, E, creating variety and bringing movement to the section. On the following album, Air of Vulgaris, the majority of the bass tracks were recorded by Homie himself a couple of songs featuring sound engineer Alain Johannes, the more than decent bass player who actually came out with some cool stuff, like the leading lick of the main riff of Turning the Screw. <laughs> On I'm Designer, Johannes bass snakes through Homie's guitar, playing with upbeat and downbeat, creating a cool back and forth effect. Around this time, Queens of the Stone Age started adding a heavy fuzz effect on the bass guitar, very evident especially on 3s and 7s, with Homie taking care of the low ends. 
Pretty good, but not as heavy as Oliver's P bass and amp and combo. The Light Clockwork album saw another lineup change, now featuring Michael Schumann on bass guitar. Way more melodic player compared to his predecessors, Schumann immediately showcases his ability with the simpler, smooth, and melodic pentatonic licks of Eyes Set by the Ocean. Though not as badass as Oliveri, Schumann's tone is dirty enough and sits well in the mix. On Calopsia, the bass follows the guitar most of the time, but the little licks in between the main root notes give an added value to the song. Same goes for Fortress, where the connecting notes in between the tonics are the real melodic backbone of the song. Schumann's excellent taste for notes is also the main theme that pushes Hideaway and Villains of Circumstance. So even though Queens of the Stone Age are definitely not a bass guitar band, we can still say that the instrument gave its contribution in crafting the sound, especially during the Nick Oliveri period. A lot of Queens of the Stone Age fans say that there is no Queens of the Stone Age without Nick Oliveri. I personally don't think this is true. After all, the band revolves around Hummies, vocals and guitar, and consistently release good and successful albums even when having no actual bass player. But with Oliveri's departure, the band definitely lost their bass muscle and morphed into something else. Still good, but not as fierce. Nick added the hardcore and a somewhat wild element to the band. And though Michael Schumann does a pretty good job in providing the low ends to this day, when it comes to who's the best bass player for the Queens of the Stone Age, we all know what the answer is. Thank you very much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment and follow me on Instagram.